morning to all of you. Uh, happy Sunday uh, sa lahat ng sa buong BBC, sa buong Blessed Church, at sa lahat ng mga nanonood nitong Facebook Live. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, I have a question. If you know the future, and you are certain of it, and you know that it is good, will you still worry? Will you still be uncertain? Or will you still be afraid? For example, yung mga nagre-review sa board exam, if you are reviewing and preparing for the board exam, you are uncertain whether you are to pass or to fail that causes anxiety or fear. But what if God speaks to you and tell you that you will be an engineer, you will be a physician, you'll be a licensed teacher or whatever course you may be taking. What if he told you that you will be licensed professional this 2020. Will you still be, will you still fear? Will you still be afraid of not making it to the board exam because your exams are failing? I mean, your quizzes in your uh, review center or your uh, pre-board exams are failing, will you still be afraid? Or for example, you're afraid na hindi ka na magkakaasawa. <laughs> diba? Pero God speaks to you and then He told you and He showed you the future that you are happily married you have kids with you and you are prosperous and you are healthy, wealthy. Will you still be afraid? Will you still fear? Will you still, I mean, panic? Of course not. Because you know you saw the future. So knowing the future is important if we can. It removes all uncertainty, anxiety, or fear. So that is our topic for today. Let's pray. Almighty Father God, thank you so much, O God, today. Thank you for your blessing, your goodness. Thank you for this opportunity that you are giving to us. Thank you, Lord, for the safety na ipinagkalob nyo sa amin. Thank you, God, for the strong leadership that you give here in our country, the Philippines, and in this city. Thank you, God, for our governor and the other leaders, the mayor, oh God, who implemented this uh, the order of our president to really enhance the quarantine, community quarantine system, oh God. And thank you, God, for the uh, obedient heart of the Filipino people, despite, O oh God, a lot are still disobeying, O oh God. Lord, turuan mo kami, O oh God, na sa pamagitan, O oh God, ng leadership ng aming bansa at sa pamagitan mo, O oh God, at sa pamagitan ng mga Kristiyano, O oh God, matutuhan namin, O oh God, na sumunod without delay sa pinapatupad ng gobyerno at lalong-lalo na, O oh God, sa inuutos mo sa amin, O oh God. Lord, nang hihingi kami, O oh God, ng revelation mula sa iyo, ng wisdom na sa iyo lamang, O oh God, amidst this confusion that people do not know where to listen to, and we forget, O oh God, that the only reliable source of word, source of news, is nothing and no one but you. Lord, tulungan mo kami sa pamagitan ng mensaheng ito, kami ay makapag, makatagpo ng comfort makatagpo ng peace of mind and above all makatagpo ng healing mula sa iyo these things of Father we ask in Jesus name Amen I want us to read in the Bible the book of Job 
si Joe ay isa sa mga tao no na face to face kinausap both ng mga kaibigan niya but higit sa lahat kinausap personally ni Lord. Marami sa atin no uh, nakakatanggap tayo ng word galing sa Bible pero yung audible audible voice bihira siguro yung nakakarinig ng ganyan. Actually, uh, mga few days ago, I asked Pastor Rafi if there are books written testifying that God talked to them in uh, audible voice that they learn that they know what the Lord's will, what the Lord's message to them is. And Pastor Rafi gave me some some title of books because I am really fascinated and I'm really uh, I really want to hear an audible voice from God. There was a time, the reason why I became Christian is when I heard an audible voice but that was during the time that I was dreaming. I don't know if it, it was a vision I can no longer recall whether I'm not really certain whether it is a vision or whether it is a dream, when God talked to me, it's, a, it's just one statement, don't forsake my word. And because of that, I search and I look for, for a group or for church that is teaching the word of God. So, if only we can, we can hear directly from the Lord, it will erase all uncertainty, right? But I want you to open your Bible in Job 11 verse 5. Ang sabi dito, but what if God were to speak? A friend of Job speaks to him. But what if God were to speak? What if he were to talk with you and discloses his secrets. After all, there is so much more to understanding. Understanding is what we are after. We want to understand what is happening. But according to the, to the wisdom of the friend of Job, there are more to understanding than merely understanding. It's the secret of God. It is important that in this in this thing that is happening, we must be able to hear the message coming from God. Because, conf because fear is reigning. Confusion is reigning. Instead of reigning in us, fear is reigning. And you cannot blame people. Because with more than 500,000 confirmed infected, hindi kasama yung mga unconfirmed and unreported. With 500,000 infected or more, and 25,000 confirmed death, you cannot blame people to, to be afraid. You cannot blame people to, to panic. There is confusion. To add to it, the social media and the main media, there are conflicting reports. And to add the conflicting politicians, the order of one being countered or opposed by another group. There is really confusion. In fact, there is suspicion. People suspect even their friends whether he is infected or not. Because we cannot see the enemy, the virus. We cannot even feel it until symptoms result or appear after 14 days. We cannot help. People cannot help but be suspicious of their the friends or the people around them. It limits our socialization. It causes panic. 
There is panic buying. Why? Because they're, they, are, they are uncertain. Until when will the order of lockdown or enhanced community quarantine for us? Until when will this last? If this will last for one month, then will there still be food to buy after one month? Or if there is food to buy, can we still afford it? In fact, we were surprised that water from 15 pesos per gallon or 20 pesos per gallon is now being sold at more than double the price, 50 pesos per gallon. And that's just two days after the lockdown order or enhanced community quarantine ordered by the, by the governor. How much more after one week? So, there is really panic. And you cannot blame people, most especially parents. We cannot prejudge people. Because some of them want, do not want to panic. They not really try their best not to panic. But others are panic buying. Some people wanted to obey. But some more people are not obeying. Some people are doing, are staying at home. But some are not. So it caused panic. It caused suspicion. And as I told you, what complicates this is the media. Most especially the social, the, even the main media or the social media. We're hearing a lot of unconfirmed reports. We are hearing from anyone and everyone except the Almighty One. Amen. To remove confusion, it is time for us to listen to the Almighty and the only one who knows everything and the only one who can control and command everything. There is nothing that will caught God by surprise. In fact, there is nothing you can pray that God did not already heard. Lahat ng ipagpe-pray natin, narinig niya na. Lahat ng sasabihin natin, lahat ng gagawin natin, He knows it. He's not just one step ahead of us. He's a lot, million miles ahead of us. Now this thing that is happening is certain. God has a message or is saying something to us. If we will only listen to Him. If we will only listen to Him. He is speaking in the, in the Bible. The friend of Job asked him, What if God will speak to you? The question is, will we listen? In the book of Proverbs, from chapter 1 to chapter 8, it says, Wisdom is shouting on the streets. What is happening is not just shouting, it's shouting out loud with the, with the best and most powerful amplifier and speaker there is. What is the message that this thing that is happening is giving us? The message of God is comforting. That the future is good. In the book of Revelation, he made a promise that when he comes back, there will be he will reestablish the governments. He will establish his kingdom, and the governments of this world will be upon his government. The kingdoms of this world will be upon his kingdom. There will only be one kingdom. There will only be one king. 
and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that kingdom, there is no abuse, there is no sickness, there is no, there is no uh, injustice, there is no fear. There is no crying, there is no pain. There is no weeping. All is joy. And that's good. Ang ibig sabihin, because this time is not yet good, this is not yet the end. Yeah, amen. The end is very good. Amen. What makes us fear actually is when we continue to expose ourselves to a lot of negativities that we are hearing around us. God is trying to slow us down. His first message, I believe, is this. He wants us to reconnect to Him. Amen. This quarantine is a good time. This is a good time to reconnect to Him. There are plenty of times, a lot of us, most especially those who call ourselves Christian, we want to pray, but we can't. Why? We're too busy. Yeah. And we're too safe. There is no threat. We're too rich. We have a lot. We have enough to buy our food. We have enough to buy our our luxuries. We're healthy. We, it seems that we don't need God. We have a good work. We have a good job. But this coronavirus the first in my 53 years of life. I never had imagined, I know all people never had imagined that this thing could happen. Three days ago, uh, two days ago, when we went to the grocery, we were not allowed by the security guard to enter. Why? And it's still, it was still two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon. The grocery will close at 10. We were not accepted. Why? Because long line. of the long line, it's full. They can no longer accommodate anyone. There's panic buying. And we, we went to another grocery, it's the same thing. Another grocery, it's the same thing. There is really panic. But isn't it this thing, the good thing about this is God is trying, is calling our attention to come to Him, to talk to Him, yeah. to fellowship with Him. Again, the Almighty God our Creator is calling our attention that He is desperately wanted to fellowship, to talk with His creation. I really like how Bill Gates, Bill Gates, by the way, recently just donated 85 million 85 million euro to fight coronavirus. I want, I really like how he put it. And I quote, he said, Many people consider this as a great but I see it as a great corrector. No word is truer than what Bill Gates mentioned. That this is not more than a great disaster. This is a great corrector. What this COVID virus teaches us and the teaching, the correction, makes it beautiful. Hindi lahat ng nangyayari masama. 
I remember one author, Pastor Mark Batterson, I learned this from him when he shared the law of compensation. That in every negative that is happening, we, nature, always tend to compensate. Engineers call this the law of equilibrium or the law of balance. Now, yes, there is negative that, that is happening, but there is a balance to it. There is a compensation to it. The good thing that happened is this. One, it teaches us that we are not in control. To learn that we are not in control makes us panic at first. Because we thought that we are in control, that we can manage everything, we don't have a problem. That if there is a problem, we can manage it, we can control it, we can solve it. But what about coronavirus? No intelligence of human being, no advanced medical technology can solve it at the moment. The research are claiming that by 2021, a vaccine will be available. But that is a claim. That is just a declaration. For dengue, there is no yet proven vaccine that can control dengue. HIV. They cannot be controlled until now. Diabetes, it cannot be controlled. There is no vaccine, there is no medicine for it. It can only be managed, but it cannot be controlled. It cannot be healed. I'm not saying, and I'm not being uh, pessimistic, that there will not be any vaccine that can be invented to control coronavirus. How I wish, and I wish above all, that today, that vaccine will be discovered, will be invented. But the point is, learning that you are not in control makes you panic, but eventually, upon learning and admitting that God is in control, it makes you, it brings you at peace. Nothing happens without His permission. In fact, the book of Proverbs says, you throw a dice, but the outcome is dictated by the Lord. There's nothing He doesn't know, even the number of hair or strands in our hair. He knows everything. He knows the number of cells in our body. He knows the number of coronavirus infected people now. He knows everything. And He knows the antidote. He knows how to heal each and every one of us. But we've got to listen to His message. He wants, He is communicating with us. Second beautiful thing that we have to realize it teaches us the importance of family. To a lot of us having a quality time is just a dream for a long time. For me it's just a wish it's a prayer to have a quality time, meaning 24 hours, to have a 24 hours with my, with my children. Had been a dream, had been a desire for a long, long time. But now it's not just a 24 hours. It's already two weeks that we've been together. For those who are not with your family, I, I sympathize with you. 
it's difficult to be in quarantine without your family. Because in times like this, we need our family. It gives us comfort just to have your family in times of uncertainty, even all of you are uncertain, just having your family with you gives you comfort and strength. Family is important. We thought, just like me, it's difficult to, to do. But it can be done. God wants us to enjoy our family. He wants us to enjoy Him, to fellowship with Him. He wants us to enjoy our family. Those who are with your family, don't spend your time on social media. Spend your time with your family. Those who are not with your family, spend your time in your cell phone, in your internet, communicating with your family. Thanks to the technology. Third thing, third blessing, message of the coronavirus. I realized this from the words of Bill Gates. It teaches us that we people are connected. What affects one affects all others. We cannot afford to say that I don't need you. Everyone needs everyone. Look, because of what happened, it separates. Religion is no longer important. Whether you are Catholic, whether you are, whether you are Pentecostal, whether you are Baptist, or whether there you are Evangelical, whether you are a Muslim, people can be united. In the hospital, no one will ask you, are you Catholic? Are you Muslim? Are you a born-again Christian? No. No one. The only concern is whether you are infected or not. And the health workers, they are heroes. A lot died, even doctors. A lot of doctors already died because of the disobedience hard-headedness of a lot of people. The reason of the spread, people are not honest. When the doctors, when the health workers ask them where they have been, what do they feel? Yeah. Honesty is really important. And because of that, a lot of doctors were contaminated. A lot of health workers are contaminated. Now, we lack health workers. Because they themselves need to quarantine themselves. We need each other. We can be united. Look, politics was set aside. All the some unwise politicians have the courage, like for example here in the Philippines, what even question in the Senate? What is the need for emergency power? This is not the time for politics, thanks to our very wise Congressman Cayetano and even our very wise Senator, Senator Manny Pacquiao and all the other wise Senators who set aside politics just to be united. We can be united. I just hope that we just unite without the coronavirus. We could be a nation, just one nation. Another thing, another good thing here, another good correction that we have here 
is we learn what is really necessary. We learn what we really need. Number four. Number four. We really, what we really need. Look, there is panic buying, right? But have you heard of people panic buying wristwatches? Have you heard people panic buying that cell phone? There's no panic buying for cell phone for luxury items. Many already called cell phone as a necessity. iPhone 10. Many call it necessity. I need it. I deserve it. But in this time, we learn what really is necessary. What really is essential, what really is non-essential. Food and water is essential. That's all what we need. Number five lesson. Life and health is more important than money. I heard uh, a Chinese proverb that goes like this. We sacrifice our health to earn a lot of money. Then later we spend all our money to regain our health. Health is important. Most especially now, for example, me, having having an itchy throat before, just like any one of us, or having a cough, having a fever, is just nothing to us before. We just say, iligo mo lang yan, okay na yan. No? Or itulog mo lang yan, o iinom mo lang ng tubig. Just drink water, and it's it's okay. You'll be okay. But now, when you feel that your throat is itchy, when you cough, when your temperature, body temperature is 0.1 degree higher, you become suspicious of yourself. Do I? Am I infected? More than infected, everyone is affected. Right? There is no one who is not affected. Practically all are affected. And sometimes, the effect of being affected is worse than being infected. And no, there could be some who died because of heart attack because he's affected, not infected. This thing that is happening teaches us what really is essential. And lastly, and I want to close on this, It taught us the beauty or the value of obedience. In most of the posts, the lessons from Italy and other countries, the reason why the virus spread is because Allah did not obey. Or a lot delayed obedience. Look, here in the Philippines we are blessed because we have a strong and a wise president. Happy birthday to him yesterday. No? Do, do you know that it was the third uh, president? He is the president whom we just call 
by Duterte. A lot of previous presidents, we call him with a prefix, president. Yeah? Pero si Duterte, Duterte lang yun, hindi nga Rudy, di ba? Duterte. Iba subukan mong ikaw tawagin kang pinito mo, Hoy Ridaw. Di ba? Okay? Hoy Padilla. Pag tinawag kang pinito, di ba? It's not, it's not good to hear. Okay pa yung first name, pero pinito. Pero how do we call Duterte? Duterte, di ba? Most people call him Duterte. And he doesn't, he doesn't bother being called Duterte. Because of his strong and wise leadership, when he declared two weeks ago that the Philippines is in the state of health emergency, a lot of his cabinet members obeyed right away, specifically the deaf head. They ordered cancellation of classes for one week, then becomes two weeks, then eventually became one month. The problem really is in schools. They did not obey right away. Yeah, exactly. They did not obey right away. In fact, the school of my my children disobeyed. Remember the rule: one day late could be one day too late. One day late could be one day too late. You delayed the order. For example, in Italy. They were ordered quarantine. Some delayed one day. Because some delayed one day, some delayed again another day. Then another day. Then another day. After two weeks, it's a pandemic. I really wish the total lockdown would have been implemented sooner. It's it's really inconvenient. It's really a hassle. Why? You cannot go out. You cannot do what you can, what you used to do. Yeah. In our business, we were affected because my business is review center. No big gathering. At first, we were worried. Students will ask. My 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 wife always tells me. Love, you make announcement, you make announcement, you make announcement. But now it's unnecessary. Why? No one is inquiring. There's not even an announcement of the cancellation of the review of the board exam for civil. But definitely there is. Because all others affected by the quarantine period were already cancelled. Obedience, immediate obedience is important. If Italy, if the people and the leaders of Italy obeyed right away, it would not have been yeah. a pandemic. Philippines. Philippines must learn from the lesson. Mm -hmm. I heard a wise man say, and this is also found in the book of Ecclesiastes that what was will be, what was is, and what is will be. Meaning, what already happens is already again happening and will still be happening. Mm -hmm. The mistakes of before is happening now, mm -hmm. will still happen in the future. Why? Because people do not learn from mistakes, people don't learn from history. That it is always safe to obey, and in obeying, it must be, we must obey right away. Amen. One day late could be one day too late. I remember one time, uh, you will agree with me if you also experienced what I, I experienced before. Mm -hmm. I was uh, supposed to go to Davao because of a very important appointment. I think it's a conference. If I'm just the attendee, no problem. But I was the speaker. 
I am to go to Davao. I am supposed to go to Davao. And I, when I arrive airport and go to the check-in counter, the secretary there, the clerk said, the check-in counter closed five minutes earlier. Meaning, I cannot take the plane anymore. I cannot be admitted because the plane the plane door was already closed. They cannot open it. They open it for me. I was late only by five minutes. But I was late. Five minutes too late. And five minutes could be too late and could be too expensive. Because I need to go to the vow. I was forced to buy a 7,000 worth of same day ticket just to go there. Five days, five minutes too late, five minutes too expensive. Delayed obedience can cost life. There are many lessons, there are many good things that we can learn from this, but one thing that is good, that God is in control. Let's take advantage of this moment that God is calling our attention to fellowship with Him, to fellowship with our family, to fellowship even by social media with our friends. It's time to connect because we are connected. Haven't you noticed? One thing that makes it so difficult, most especially we Filipinos, we love to group together. We can laugh at ourselves at simple things. But what what makes this so complicated is we are limited. We cannot just chat together. We cannot make chismes or gossip. Okay? We cannot talk about things that we want to talk because we want safety. We quarantine ourselves. It's hard to be alone, talking to no one. So let's learn our lesson. Let's go back to God. Let's take time to fellowship with Him. He wants us to fellowship with Him. This coronavirus is not, un is not with beyond His control. It's beyond our control, but it is within His control. Our Almighty God is all-knowing, is all-powerful. So, as we end, I want to invite everyone to pray. And after this, connect with your family, those who are not with your family, but those with your family, make the most with your family, and have fellowship with our Lord. So let's pray. Almighty Father God, thank you so much, O oh God, for this, for this message. Maraming salamat po sa mga beauty na na-discover namin dahil dito sa nangyayaring ito, O oh God. Lord, salamat sa, rule of sa law of compensation na natutuhan namin, O oh God, na despite the evil, the negative things, seemingly evil na, nag na nangyayari, merong compensation para dito, O oh God. And ikaw ang nagsabi, O God, na sa Bible, O God, sa iyong salita, na sa bawat ninakaw sa amin, lalong-lalo na ng primary na magnanakaw, ang kalaban, ang diablo, si Satanas. Na sa bawat ninakaw sa amin, ang magiging kapalit ay double compensation, O God. Hindi lang kapalit ng nawala, kundi double compensation. And we claim it, O God, a double portion of blessing para sa lahat ng mga naapektuhan itong virus na to, okay? Lord, pinag uh, pinagdadasal po namin lahat po ka ng mga lalong lalo na yung mga daily wage earners, okay? Na no work, no pay. Natulungan nyo sila, okay? Bigyan nyo sila ng provision galing sa gobyerno, galing sa kindness, okay, ng mga tao na may kapasidad na tumulong matulungan sila, O God. At O God, yung mga tinutulungan, O God, huwag maging abusado na 
maging ungrateful na sila nang tinulungan ng pakiramdam ay obligasyon ng mga tao na tulungan sila, O God. Lord, tulungan mo kami, O God, lalo lang lalo na ang bansa namin na matutuhan namin ang disiplina, O God. Na sa pamagitan nito, after this, we will not forget that we need to always obey, be obedient, be disciplined, and be submissive to the authority of God. Lord, maraming salamat po sa lahat. Thank you, God, and we sit and we, we live, we step on your promise that because you are a good God and because you are in control, everything will be fine, everything will be good, oh God. Lord, we apply your blood sa coronavirus, that through it, mawawala, mamamatay ang coronavirus. Salamat po, oh God, sa mga beauty, sa mga positive things na naranasan namin, na naintindihan namin, and to take advantage of it, to correct, oh God, ourselves, to correct our life, to correct our mindset. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Indeed, this coronavirus more than just a great disaster, it is more of a great corrector, O God. Thank you so much for correcting us. Thank you so much, O God, for making us realize what your message is, O God. And help us, O God, to realize the complete message, the complete word na gusto mong parating sa pamamagitan itong pangyayari ito. Maraming salamat po sa iyo, O God. Indeed, you are good Indeed, you are beautiful. Indeed, you are amazing. You are almighty. You are all-powerful. You are all-knowing. You are all-loving. And, O oh Lord, you are our great leader, O oh God. Lord, we praise you. We glorify you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Paalala ko nga lang pala, no, uh, today it was declared by uh, Pastor, uh, by Bishop Oriel that this is a day of prayer and fasting. Let us participate uh, and so that we will claim that God's promise in His Word that if my people will humble themselves, yeah. I will heal. Amen. Amen. And it's our prayer for healing ng bansa natin. Not only from coronavirus, mm -hmm. but all the illness na nangyayari sa bansa natin. So, we praise God for this and magandang hapon, magandang nang hati sa inyong lahat. Mahimod to.